Hey everyone, it's Andy Kushner with The Wedding Biz. Well, I know you all are just chomping at the bit to hear about my month-long getaway on an island in the Pacific, but I'm actually recording this just before going, so I'm not yet able to relate any good stories, but I will. So I do want to say that if you missed last week's episode, it was a revisit of my original interview of the popular planner designer, Lisa Vorse. And today, I'm excited to announce that our release is a brand new episode with C.C. Johnson. CeCe's design agency, CC New York, is globally regarded as a leader in luxury invitation design. Tony Birch named her as a woman to watch and was called by Anna Wintour of Vogue magazine a favorite designer. WeTV named CeCe Johnson as their network's invitation innovator and expert, and Harper's Bazaar crowned CeCe an invitation idol. CeCe is also a highly sought-after speaker on branding, design, and entrepreneurship for women in business. My first interview of CC was episode number 94 in October of 2018, and then on a panel with Christian Oth and Sylvia Weinstock in episode 233 on February 20th, and then she came on for a third time in episode 326 in January of 21. Enjoy this brand new conversation with CC. So, hey, Cece, it's so good to have you back on. It's been a while. Yes. Hi. Thank you so much for having me. It's good to be back. Yeah. Well, and as you know, you've been on the show several times. And one of the things that I most respect and admire about you is how you constantly are evolving yourself and your business. And it's actually been three years, three years since we've spoken. And so I'm wondering, like, what are some of the biggest changes you've gone through in that time period? Is anything come to mind when I ask that? Well, I think as creatives, we're always evolving, right? If you don't change, then you're what, dead? I feel like (laughs) you have to constantly evolve and create and innovate. And I also think as creatives, that's just in our blood, right? We have to always, in order to keep our our creative spirit satisfied, I think we have to evolve and change too. So um, I I think someone once said, I can't remember the name, but the most con- constant change or the most constant thing in business is change. So I'm, I am always changing. I feel like we have to always be ahead of the curve and innovate and, and all of those things, of course, like trends aside, um, just as a creative individual and my team, I'm always looking to make new things. So we have, um, you know, I think last time we talked was right after the pandemic, right? So during that whole That's situation, right. And I have really focused on creating more of the lifestyle products that we spoke about before, doing a lot of very cool collaborations with some pretty great uh, international brands that are coming out this year. I'm really excited about just expanding into more lifestyle as well. Of course, we have our couture invitations. We have now our I guess we call it the collection invitations that are like semi custom. So they're ready to order designs that are more at a affordable price point or more, I call it attainable luxury. So we have two different uh, services now for the customer to choose, whichever suits their needs best. We do a lot of corporate and branding. We, we spoke last on my, on the last episode with uh, how I launched the CC brand makeovers to help people during the pandemic with their branding for their businesses. And that's really taken off, which I love because it's really helpful or I love helping other businesses to just really elevate themselves and take their brands and their businesses to new heights and to meet the dreams and the goals that they hope and wish for. Cause I do know firsthand that if your logo is working against you, that's just a terrible place to be when it comes to your business. So you don't realize how much it can work against you. Yeah. Other than the logo, what would be a couple really major branding points that you find that your clients need help with? I mean, I think the whole brand makeover is really, it, it goes from, you know, the before where you don't have a a logo that's sending the right messages, the colors are wrong, perhaps it's just attracting the wrong customer. And so the whole brand makeover that we emphasize and focus on is of course, there's the identity, the mark, but usually it goes beyond to create the logo type and then some kind of symbol, like for the CC New York brand, we have the interlocking four C's that that then can be a brand extension we like to create brand prints. So it's like a, a pattern that can be translated onto many things, whether it's 
you know, I don't know if you're a floral designer, I like to make the tissue that maybe your florals are delivered in potentially wallpaper behind your zoom or your, you know, your office. Um, and of course that goes into the branding guidelines, your fonts, your color palette, just like the mood, the vibe, just the, the voice. There's so many parts that go into creating a whole, um, a whole brand to make sure that all well, those parts are really, you know, sending the same message. Well, and the way that you've done that for yourself is amazing. So I'm, you know, before we finish this, I want to make sure that people know how to reach you because I highly recommend that if people need help with a branding makeover, that they get help from you because all we got to do is look through your website and it's obvious. Um, you know, also you mentioned, and I've noticed that you've increased your strategic partnerships and I've noticed planners and designers doing a lot more collaboration in just the past couple of years, like two or three years. So first of all, I wonder what is your overall philosophy about strategic partnerships? Listen, um, I love working with anybody and everyone that's the right fit, right? But when you really gel with a, a planner or you know a creative partner and you find that you can do really great work together, then the more you can deepen that relationship and work more in tandem or in sync and support each other, I think the more magic can happen when it comes to the events. So, and also, I don't know if you're implying about how Instagram has launched the collaborate collaborator post, which I love. I think that was genius and very helpful for all of us who do really collaborate to create these events. It doesn't just come from one person. So it's very, um, wonderful to really join forces on Instagram and like, you know, put all of your brands together to elevate a post and really get the message out. So I think that's really strong. Yeah. I'm noticing a lot more of that as I go through Instagram. Can you just, just briefly kind of define for people who may not be taking full advantage of that opportunity, what that is? Yeah. So when you go to make a post, if you well, 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 normally where you would tag a person, if you select that you hit to tag people, there is a section right in there that now says to invite a collaborator. So you, I think, depending on what kind of account you have, you can maybe invite up to like, maybe it's three people now. It used to only be one, but I feel like it's three or four. They might be upping it depending on what kind of accounts you have. But um, the more, you know, key people that make sense in that photo. Like for us, it would be the event planner, typically the photographer, or if there are pictures of the events, then the floral designer, like the people, the key creative partners that are featured in that uh, post or the reel or the photos, you can invite those people to be part of it. And then what happens is if they accept, then that exact same post shows up on all the feeds. And so collectively, all your audiences are working together to boost the engagement and the exposure and all that wonderful stuff. So it tends to do pretty well. So what are some of the strategic partnerships that you've entered into in the past few years? Well, are you talking also about like um, our collaborations that we're doing? Yeah, not on Instagram necessarily, but you know, in terms of your business, because I, I believe I've seen some announcements about that with you? Yeah. So that was what I was getting at in terms of the lifestyle product, which I'm so excited about to really take my, you know, the artwork that I'm painting that we're creating in our design studio and translate that to lifestyle product that goes beyond just the invitation that one day for the event. So we recently launched um, a scarf collaboration. They are gorgeous silk handmade beautifully done uh made in como like the same quality as hermes and i'm not just saying that to brag but i'm it's true we we really are sticklers about that and the quality we partner with by Bile and um and we offer now custom couture ones that we can design from scratch for you we have fashion ones that are available in silk twill and silk cashmere, all different sizes. And then we have a collection that you can actually personalize for like save the dates or invitations. So taking, you know, uh, always looking to do innovative things for when it comes to invitations or save the dates. So that's been really fun. Um, we have a collaboration coming out like soon. <laughs> I don't can't reveal the exact date. But I can okay. say the brand. It's with La Dure, which is the famous French macaroon house. Sure. Uh, very excited about that one. So that's coming soon. And we've launched uh, phone cases and tech accessories with Bandelier. 
Um, we have some the fashion, the silk uh, robes and cami sets, and we have some other fashion coming out soon. So that's exciting. And wallpaper and home goods, all sorts of fun things. So I um, just really loving bu- being able to build out the collection of products for our clients who are really looking to beautify their world in new ways. Can you, CC, give me, I don't know if this is a t- too tough of a question, but can you give some general tips for people who want to pursue that kind of a strategic partnership? I mean, you've got a reputation, so I'm sure it's, it's easier than for most, you know, when you reach out to someone, but like, how do you even reach out? Like, are you using LinkedIn? I don't know much about this and I'm curious. I, I think it's like, there's no secret like way. I mean, I, you know, I've been very strategic about who I would like to partner with. I've created like vision boards and set, you know, set out my dream collaborations. And so that's your first step. I think that's, that's my first step. Yeah. Cause you don't want to just say yes to anything. I, we definitely have lots of asks, but if they're not the right fit, then, you know, you have to think of your brand as well and, and make sure that your audience will appreciate and like the product that you're going to collaborate with. Like if it doesn't make sense, you know, some people are like, Oh, you should do a club with target or, you know, Walmart or whatever. And I'm like, well, I don't know if I'm ready for that yet because my brand is very high end and luxury and I don't want it to potentially like tarnish all the hard work that I've been building for 20 years. Can you believe it's my 20 year anniversary this year? Wow. Oh, that's fantastic. (laughs) Yeah. Thank you. And so, I mean, Target's gotten really cool now. So like, I'm like, maybe, but I think I need to, you know, so you just need to be smart about who you connect with. It's easy to be flattered and, you know, want to say yes, but if it's not the right fit and they, you know, don't have the right potential, I guess, everything. I mean, from like their audience to their, how they run their marketing, what kind of reach do they have? I mean, it has to really be in sync. Otherwise it won't go, it won't be very successful and could be damaging. Yeah, I I can see that. Definitely no question about that. You know, also, I want to go in a different direction here. I notice, um, or or rather, let's talk about couture and design. You know, earlier for a moment, we were mentioning that. what And the rising trend of personalized design. Can you speak to that? Yeah, I, I mean, I think, and I'm, I'm proud to say that since I started 20 years ago, there has always been a desire for personalized design, like I call it couture design, that's really created from scratch, you know, from our imaginations for the clients, like to get something that's created for you. And that's one of a kind. And, you know, that's just inspired by you for your event or for anything is just really, really special. And I don't think that's really ever going to go away. So um, it's just gotten more and more of, I guess, readily available, if you will. um, And more, I don't want to say common, but more, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like more like expected, I guess, because it's very available, you know? So I think what you're, you're asking is like, has it evolved? Has it changed? I think the challenge is to push, it's been being pushed even more, you know, how do you, with the market so saturated and there's just so much options out there, how do you be, you know, for us, how do we really be true to our core mission of creating really unique, one of a kind, you know, never been seen before designs when there's so much out there. So does that answer what you're asking? Yeah, 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 yeah. I want to make sure that you're aware of two other shows that are on the Wedding Biz Network. First are two seasons of Stop and Smell the Roses, hosted by well-known event designer Preston Bailey. Preston speaks with such an honest and sincere voice. This is the only platform in which you can hear this legend of the industry share secrets to his success. Also, check out the 140 episodes of The Business of Being Creative, hosted by Sean Lowe. Sean's consulting firm, The Business of Being Creative, is full of topics and advice for any creative business with a focus on the event and interior design industry. You can find both shows at theweddingbiznetwork.com or on your cell phone's podcast app for both Stop and Smell the Roses and The Business of Being Creative. I'm thinking back to our first conversation. Um, We talked, I mean, for, for anyone listening who hasn't heard it, it was amazing, like the topics that we went over and how in depth we went. And one of the issues that we talked about 
um, was related to balancing creativity with running a successful business. And Cece, I'm amazed. Like I, I know how much you're doing and I look at your website and your Instagram and um, you're, you're doing so much. I also see these wonderful posts about your family and your kids. As you've grown your business, how do you maintain such a balance? Um, first of all, before we get into family and all of that, how do you maintain such a balance with balancing your creativity with running the business side? Yeah, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm so <laughs> flattered, first of all, that you think I'm doing it well. I mean, I think we're always our hardest, toughest critic. Um, it's definitely like I joke sometimes that I'm a professional juggler because it is a juggle always. But I think now my kids, my son is almost 13. Can you believe it? So I think I've had a lot of years of sort of trial and error, the beat down, you know, the, the ups, right. the downs, the, the stresses, the, oh my gosh, like I'm never doing that again, kind of lessons that you learn. And that, that might mean for me, like working too late or, uh, working on my phone next to my kids. Like I am at a place where I know that I didn't have kids just to like ignore them <laughs> because I was too busy working, you know, and I'm not saying this, like, that's what parents do. I just say it's very hard to get everything done in one day and get home in time to cook food for dinner, you know, help them with their homework and make sure they get in bed by my kids go to bed sometimes seven thirty, eight o'clock at night, you know, and then you're like, where did the day go? And all of a sudden you're exhausted and ready to crash too. And you still have work to do. So, um, I think the, the balance is the word balance is sort of a, I don't know, like a <laughs> an illusion kind of. I think we have to all be realistic of what we can handle and also be okay. This is what I'd say I learned in the 13 years because I have two kids and my daughter's eight now. I'd say that you have to be give yourself grace and prioritize really strictly with your boundaries and with what really moves the needle in your business and in your life. So what does that mean? Like your to-do list. I mean, sometimes I look at my to-do list on my, in my journals and I'm just like, why am I writing so many things down? I can't even get all that done in one day. But I think that if you start to prioritize and, and just look at that list and go, okay, what are the crucial top three things above and beyond, you know, like, of course there's deadlines and things, but like those top three things that have to get done that day, maybe for work and for your personal life, you can have, you know, that balance there and focus on those first. And then the other little things can kind of be sprinkled in during different times, you know, whether you're commuting in or whether you just like quickly send that one last email before the end of the day. But that way, then those big deadlines aren't looming over you and you feel like you have that grace and sort of flexibility to work on the next thing the next day versus it being that one thing that had to get done or those three things that were critical that day. Um, it's easier said than done. I'm not a pro at it by any means, but I think I've given myself forgiveness if I don't get it done yeah, perfectly. I like that. Because mm -hmm. I know that I pushed it as far as I could and the old me would probably stay up way too late and I started prioritizing sleep. <laughs> Maybe I'm getting older, I don't know. But like health is important and I still haven't figured out how to go to the gym or anything. So like, don't go, go judging me that I'm like, you know, perfect workout girl by any means. I've always sucked at that since I was a kid. I never wanted to even do PE and run the mile. I was getting notes so I could get excused from it. <laughs> um, oh God, I can relate. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, I don't know. I mean, especially when you throw kids into the mix, like God, I, I, I get, I throw kudos to all the parents, the working parents or just honestly, even, even parents, that are like with their fur babies, you got to figure out the schedule and get home and walk the dog. Like it's, we all have a lot on our plates to juggle. And I think it's really about the forgiveness and prioritizing and, and, and saying no, my friend once called it trim the fat, like say no to the things that are not helping you or right. maybe a little bit toxic people that maybe are, you know, you, when you find yourself around them, they don't really make you feel that great. So like cut them out, you know, you don't need to be with them anymore. Um, so that's what I've been trying to do and really hone in on, on the priority list for me and what's focusing best from best practices for my life, for my family and for my business and anything else that doesn't fit into that is just, I just decline and 
Don't yeah. let it in. Yeah, I think it's really good for people to hear you speak like this because I, I think a lot of us assume that creatives in this industry that are at a certain high level, you know, like you definitely are, that that you've arrived, you know, and now you've just got it figured out and it's smooth. I mean, yes, there's some rough spots, but that basically, you know, you've got it nailed at your level. But I, I think it's so important for people to know that that never ends. It just never ends. I, I really don't. I really actually don't. I disagree with that because and that uh, that's the illusion is what I'm saying. Like there's no point when you get to this like, oh, I wish that I could have that, whatever that milestone or benchmark of success is in your head. Like, you know, I, we all have them. When we start our business, we hope for this, you know, this next milestone or this next goal. And once you achieve it, you're kind of like, okay, what's next? What's next? And you're constantly climbing. And for me, like maybe it's the overachiever in me or the big dreamer in me, but you know, when you, even me 20 years in, I'm like, oh my gosh, like, I don't want to get replaced. Like, I feel like am I, there's always the mindsets, the mind games that go on is like, am I not going to enough networking parties? Do I not have enough, you know, (laughs) events to be part of? Or why am I not getting these jobs? And those people are, or, I mean, the competition is like massive now. And so I think we all have to be realistic of, you can never just be complacent and sort of too comfortable. Or like you said, you can't, you don't just, make it, you still have to get up and get out of bed and work yeah. hard every single day. Otherwise, I feel like you are forgotten. <laughs> well, and there's that saying, I especially hear it in the recording industry, but I think it applies to all of us is that it's, you know, it's one thing getting up to that high level. It's very, very hard, but it's even harder to stay and maintain, you know, such a successful business and keep it going. And like we said at the very beginning to continually evolve and not just business wise, but personally, because it's all related. They each help each other. Yeah, totally. And I think as creatives, you know, it's funny because I've worked so hard to build this brand and I evolve as a creative as well. And people, some people might think, oh, you just do this one look or this is just your one thing that maybe, I don't know, people were, no, I was known for five or so years ago. I'm just making up the timeline, but you know, and, and I think that as creatives and as just industry people or the, or in general, like we're all creating new, new, new all the time. Isn't that kind of the goal, like the pressure at the same time of each party, you got to one up yourself to keep in the game. And, and I guess what I'm trying to say is it's a good reminder to not just judge what's maybe in your head or what you saw last on Instagram, but to really dive deeper into the current works that, that we've been working on or the, or the, you know, whoever has been working on in the industry and see the kind of jobs and the kind of creativity and the kind of work that they do, because we evolve for sure as creatives and we don't just do floral design. I know we're known for that, but we have so much. And, you know, as a personal uh, designer, I evolve as well. So I, I don't know if I'm even making any sense. This is just such, oh, a, yeah, totally. it's such a time no, of like transition right to in this new year that you're like, who am I going to be this year? <laughs> yeah. so. Just a couple more questions. You know, you know, again, we're t- you were talking about family and having two kids. How do you find time to inspire yourself? I mean, Cece, you are, you have a super creative business. Well, I guess we all do in the wedding and events industry. Um, but I, you know, again, I follow you, I know you and you're in cr- super creative how, what do you, how do you, like, what do you do to make space to, to, to get inspiration? Do you have any certain techniques? Do you have anything in particular you do? Yeah. You know, I don't have that one thing that's like, I've got to go meditate and like find my place or my inspiration. Yeah. Like I, I, I find it everywhere. And I feel like I, I need to definitely fuel my creative mind and soul by just exploring. So travel is like a key thing. I'm so thankful that that work takes me to wonderful, beautiful places around the world. And whether I'm doing speaking engagements or just getting to go to these places, traveling with my family is important. I think when you're stuck in the weeds of the day to day of just doing and whether it's designing for a deadline or for a client or, you know, just trying to work on your business or get everything done or any of that, it's hard to take a step back and like, let your brain just be quiet and think instead of just reactive and like what what fire do I have to put out now or that kind of thing so I think just getting out of the day-to-day going on a walk going on a trip for me that really helps clear my mind 
And I, I just love fashion. I love going into different industries, not just looking on Pinterest or looking on Instagram. Um, because you never know what's going to inspire you, whether I could go to the Met and see a gorgeous dress or a gown or something. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I want to do that on an invitation. <laughs> and breaking away, like, especially those who are have children, like making sure that you get your me time in. That's something that's been very tough because I usually put myself last, but I've prioritized myself. I've been working on that <laughs> in the last couple of years. Um, and now I try not to have the guilt that we so easily assess with me time that, Oh, you can't go get a massage or, Oh, you can't just like go do whatever it is. Just even if you sit, sometimes I just sit in my car and I'm like, don't talk to me. Like, just leave me alone. (laughs) Everybody, my kids, my phone, whatever. Um, and I just think and, and relax, releasing yourself from your phone is also like an incredible way to get inspired again. Like we find I find that you just get on your phone and you start mindlessly scrolling and like that just sucks yes. the inspiration out of me. And, you know, when you mentioned, you know, taking that me time and, and and for those of us who have kids, I have a daughter. She's older now. She's on her own. But I think that we're also modeling really good behavior that we're taking care of ourselves by letting our kids know, hey, I need some time to myself. And, you know, I, I just for whatever, you know, maybe you say why or not. And I think it's important for kids to see that. Yeah, I agree with that. And now as my kids get older, I actually am trying to be like, okay, everyone have their me time. You know, like there we my go. son wants to go that. play his video games and my daughter wants to go do art in her room or whatever she wants to do. You know, like I'm like, okay, we're all going to do it. It's okay. Like it's good to learn to be alone and sort of self-sufficient. And, and like, it's wonderful. Sometimes my husband and I are like, wow, the house is so quiet. Like, do you think we should go check on him? <laughs> right. No, don't. <laughs> I know, but I'm like, wait, it's actually fine. I don't care. <laughs> so that's great. It's good that's to create great. those boundaries for sure and teach them, oh, like yeah. you said. So you're totally right. Well, before we go, you know, you've been doing this for a long time, and and again, uh, you know, very successfully. What what do you dream about now, Cece? Like when you give yourself a chance to just kind of sit back and maybe it's in the middle of your me time. <laughs> 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 you know, what are you dreaming about? Oh um, gosh, uh, it's so it's so interesting. I, I have so many dreams. I mean, I definitely have my wish list of uh, next collaborations that I do dream about. Um, and I think I I dream about it. This is going to probably make people laugh or roll their eyes or think I'm silly, but like I kind of just dream about being content with where I'm at. <laughs> mm, that's a good one. Are you kidding? Does that that's sound huge. weird? Because I feel like as no! overachievers and like you know business owners, and I, I I feel like I have a hard time giving myself permission to just relax and chill yeah. because I feel like if I'm not ahead, then I hold everything back, and it's only so it's not sustainable, you know, to run the marathon forever for 20 years straight, you kind of need to realize you need the rest too. And you have to give yourself permission. So I look forward to getting to that, that place. of <laughs> You know what, what this makes me think about, I used to do a lot of songwriting. I mean, I was going back and forth to Nashville. I actually had a chance to move there and be a professional writer. I, I, I didn't do that. I continued more with the event business. But I remember some of these big hit songwriters who I met, and this I think relates to us too, they would talk about how they needed to take that break, whether you call it me time or, or, or a vacation or whatever it is, to fill the well, the creative well, especially. So that's how I look at it. I'm doing it right now. I'm at an island in the Pacific for like a month. I've been talking about this on the podcast. That's why I'm Listen, I think that's right great. Now, Actually, that that is a perfect example of what I dream about. Like being able to work remotely and but and and take a break from the day to day of my hustle and bustle in New York City, right? You're working from an island. Like how amazing is that? <laughs> to be able to just like delete the commute and all the intensities and just still focus on what you love doing, your passion, but doing it in just a completely new environment to see what comes out of you or what you get inspired with or refreshed with. That sounds really dreamy to me. Well, <laughs> for me, well, and I want to, I got to admit here, people are going to want to kill me about this, but I'm not working that much on, this is the slowest time of year for me. I've got a wonderful business partner and we cover for each other and I am doing some work like, you know, I do some virtual stuff. Um, but for the most part, I'm just ha- like hanging out at the beach. I'm going on hikes and I, you, when All I right, first started to do these, in, these, in. well, 
<laughs> but I mean, I believe we can all eventually figure. It took me, believe me, I didn't do this until I was a lot older. I mean, you know, I would I would have some breaks when I was young, but I didn't really figure this out until into my fifties, really. So to be able to just take that break, I get a, a wonderful outside, like a almost like a more objective perspective on my life, not just personal life, but my business life too, when I'm in a different environment like this. So I think that's part of it too. Totally. Well, kudos to you. One day I'll get there. (laughs) Well, Cece, every time we get on the mics, I love the direction we go. So this has been great. So thank you so much for doing this. You're so welcome. Thank you. I really appreciate you having me. Yeah. Thank you for listening to my conversation with Cece Johnson. Be sure to check out her website, which is CC New York, spelled C-E-C-I New York dot com. You can check her out on Instagram, Facebook and Pinterest at CC New York. And next week, I've got a new conversation with an innovator in the field of lighting design. And that's Ray Thompson, along with one of his lighting designers, Jackson Flagg. And finally, if you could subscribe to The Wedding Biz so that you are aware of whenever a new episode drops and also rate and review us wherever you get your podcasts from that helps new listeners like yourself to find us and follow us on Instagram in particular at The Wedding Biz and we'll catch you next week.